equity markets in the month were quite flat, the month of April, and bond markets were actually quite flat as well. So quite subdued returns, but there is still a hell of a lot to talk about. I'm joined by Harriet Ballard. The first week of every month during our weekly series, we cover what has been going on in markets, what's happened in the last month. Harriet, I want to start off with the best and worst performers. Now, one of the best performers in the month of April was European equities, and they are the standout performer year to date, up about 12%. Why have European equities performed so well relative to other areas? So European equities are catching up from a lot of the underperformance that they had last year. Last year, the energy um, crisis and concerns around growth really weighed on equity markets in Europe. This year, we've had um, a slightly warmer winter, energy concerns abating, and then positive growth surprises. And then we've also had um, more positive um, earnings uh, surprises as well. Yeah, and I've been reading a bit about that. So earnings earnings have been quite robust. And as you say, a bit of a return after a poor last year. So it's all relative. OK, worst performer, emerging market. So in the month of April, marginally negative, year to date, slightly positive, about 3%. But relative to, you know, developed market equities, quite a bit behind. So why are emerging markets lagging so much this year? So the, the key component of emerging markets is, of course, China. Uh, and whilst we've had a really positive and um, strong rebound in growth from China as COVID restrictions have been removed, um, a lot of that uh, rebound and growth in China has been domestically focused, whereas the Chinese equity index is much more heavily weighted towards sectors like property, industrials, export led companies. Uh, and that those areas of the economy haven't seen the growth come through as strongly. Uh, and then the other uh, reason that the uh, EM equity index is, is struggling slightly is the ongoing geopolitical tensions between um, you know, West and East, particularly the US and China. Um, and that has led to investors being slightly more concerned and cautious about investing in EM. Uh, and we've seen inflows there dry up and actually even reverse in the last couple of weeks. OK, really interesting. I think that point, the first point you made, on the composition of the index is really interesting. It kind of highlights why you need to be careful what you invest in because yes, the China reopening is doing well, but if it doesn't feature to the index, you don't see the returns. Okay, really good. Um, this is a difficult question um, because it's obviously quite a bit going on, but one key theme that's driving markets, what's the one thing that markets have been fix fixated on in the month of April? Uh, I actually don't think there has been one overarching theme. We started off the month um, a bit more positive, uh, the, you know, the banking system um, would be um, not systemic and not cause lots of issues that led a little bit of a positive tone. Um, we also had better growth um, data out. PMIs were very strong kind of across the board. Um, and then we had inflation data in the UK was particularly high um, and, and sticky and concerning. Uh, we've had obviously earnings season uh, come through and relatively r robust earnings. And then at the end of the month, we've had the banking concerns come back. Uh, there's been a lot of little stories for people to focus on rather than one overarching theme. Uh, and that's probably why we've um, you know, had relatively muted performance. OK, nicely sidestepped, Harriet. Not one big theme, lots of little ones. Um, one thing that we do want to add to this monthly series is one key stat in the month, because we do love numbers and stats and of even investors. And the one key stat that I wanted to pull out was 500 billion. And that is the valuation of Louis Vuitton or LVMH. We, we talked about this in last week's episode. We'll include a link uh, below if you haven't watched it. But basically, Louis Vuitton has become the biggest company in Europe, uh, a valuation of over 500 billion. I think that's fascinating in this economic environment that luxury goods are selling so much, perhaps linked to what you mentioned, Harriet, with that growth in China. We know that there's been a lot of... Uh, a lot of appetite for luxury goods from China, but uh, an interesting stat nonetheless, 500 billion, the start of the month. OK, last thing before we finish up, what is the one thing we should look out for in the month of May? So, of course, uh, investors are going to be very focused on you know, the rates and, and the central bank meetings. Uh, we've got the Fed and the ECB hiking rates this week. And then next week, we've got probably also hikes from the Bank of England. That's going to go everyone on everyone's radar. I think the one thing that may not be uh, so much at the forefront of people's minds is the US debt ceiling. Um, the US debt ceiling is a, a self-imposed limit in terms of the amount of money the, the US government can borrow. Um, and when they hit that limit, Congress has to all agree uh, to, to extend, uh, extend the debt ceiling. So 
there are some within the US government that don't believe that they should be borrowing even more debt. Uh, and that can lead to a bit of brinkmanship and, and um, delay that kind of approval going through. Uh, and it sounds like the uh, debt ceiling or the debt limit could be hit as soon as uh, the 1st of June. So we're likely to have a, a, you know, a few more headlines uh, and a few more people being concerned about this as we move through May. Brilliant. OK, so everybody may be listening and watching out for interest rates, but but actually we are going to hear more and more about the debt ceiling as the month goes on. Excellent, Harry. We will watch out for that. We will be back next week, as always, with the one thing that caught our eye. Until then, take care.